In this lecture, we are going to discuss the effect of sympathetic stimulation and sympathetic inhibition on cardiac output. What will be the effect of sympathetic nerve stimulation and sympathetic inhibition on cardiac output? We have basically in this diagram plotted the normal cardiac output, then the cardiac output when the sympathetic stimulation occur and then the cardiac output when the sympathetic sympathetic system is inhibited. Similarly, we have also plotted the venous return when the cardiac output or the venous return is normal. Similarly, we have plotted the venous return when the sym sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. And finally, we have also plotted the venous return when the sympathetic system has been inhibited. Now, previously in, in the same diagram, with the same graph, with the same curves, with the same cardiac output and venous return curve, uh, we have uh, discussed that the normal cardiac output the normal cardiac output this one is the normal cardiac output curve and the normal venous return curve this red color is the normal venous return curve they meet other each other they meet each other at a point when the cardiac output when the cardiac output is equal to the venous return and that and at that exact point the right atrial pressure is zero, 0 or around 0 millimeter of mercury. Now suppose for example this is the heart. The right, the heart is basically pumping the blood and the amount of blood that is pumped every minute is the cardiac output. The amount of blood that is returning to the heart every minute is venous return. Cardiac output has been plotted here with, with this curve and venous return has been plotted with this curve and these red color curves are basically showing the normal cardiac output and normal venous return curve and it is also showing that both the curves meet at this point and this point is around 5 liters. On the y axis we have the cardiac output and venous return and the x axis we are having the right atrial pressure so the right atrial pressure is here now we have discussed this thing again that initially when the right atrial pressure is negative there is no cardiac output there is no cardiac output or the carb cardiac output is here at zero level when the cardiac when the right atrial pressure starts increasing when the pressure here starts increasing initially there is an increase in the cardiac output but with further increase there is a plateau there is no more increase in the cardiac output that is for normal normal circumstances similarly the venous return starts here and at the right atrial pressure of 0 millimeter of mercury the venous return is also 5 liters per minute but when the right atrial pressure starts increasing at the level of around 7 the venous returns becomes 0 because when the pressure starts here at this level becomes 7 millimeter of mercury the venous return becomes zero it is because the mean systemic filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure the pressure or the force which is basically helping or pumping or forcing the blood to move towards the right towards the right atrium is also normally 7 millimeter of mercury so when this the pressure here becomes 7 or more than 7 millimeter of mercury this pressure will not be able to pump or push more blood to the heart so the venous return the amount of blood that is returning to the heart it will become zero it will become zero at this level now this was for the normal circumstances if sympathetic stimulation occurs if sympathetic stimulation occur for example in the brain the sympathetic nerves get stimulated due to fight or flight or fright response they will send signals to the heart and similarly they will, they will send signals to the peripheral vessels now when sig sympathetic stimulation occurs sympathetic stimulation occurs the heart rate will increase the heart rate will increase the number of times the heart beats per minute will increase similarly the power of contraction the power of contraction of heart will also increase and the the, the, 
the the vasculature the contraction of the blood vessels in the periphery will also increase so the blood vessel will vessels will also get constricted all these factors the 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 increased rate of heart contraction the increased power of the heart uh, contraction or the uh, increasing power of the heart and similarly contraction of the peripheral vasculature will lead to an increase in the mean systemic filling pressure it will lead to an increase an increase in the mean systemic filling pressure now in this case in this case our mean systemic filling pressure has increased to more than to around 16 to around 16 mm of mercury so now we see that the the curve the cardiac output curve it has now rotated upwards it has rotated upward and similarly the venous return curve it has also shifted upward and both of these curve the cardiac output curve and the venous return curve they meet each other at this point it simply means that the cardiac output and venous return has now increased the cardiac output and venous return has be increased to around 10 liters per minute 10 liters per minute initially in the normal circumstances the cardiac output and venous return were meeting each other at 5 liters per minute but due to sympathetic stimulation due to sympathetic stimulation their the power of the the heart power the po- contraction power of the heart has increased the pumping rate has increased the contraction of the vessels has increased all these factors has increased the cardiac output and venous return and they have shifted upward and now the mean systemic filling pressure has also increased and the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure pressure at this level it must now increase to 17 mm of mercury or 16 mm of mercury to this level the right atrial pressure must increase to 16 mm of mercury to bring down the venous return to zero level in the normal circumstances the right atrial pressure only has to rise to around 7 mm of mercury to bring down the venous return to zero level but when the sympathetic stimulation has occur the sympathetic stimulation has occur or signals has signals have come from the brain which have started in, each, in increased contraction of the heart power uh, which has given more power to the heart and the, the mean systemic filling pressure has increased so now the force or the power with which the blood is returning to the heart has increased from 7 to 16 so the right atrial pressure will have to reach that level it will has to reach that level to bring down to bring down the venous return to zero level in in simple words with sympathetic stimulation with sympathetic stimulation the cardiac output and the venous return both shifts upward or increases from a low level from this level to this level but one thing is very important the right atrial pressure initially remains the same the right atrial pressure initially remains the same but but if if at, with this stimulation with this level of cardiac output and venous return if the right atrial pressure increases it will have to increase to this level to bring down the venous return to zero level now what will happen if the sympathetic inhibition occurs if the sympathetic nerves get inhibited now normally in a normal heart there is a small tone there is a tone sympathetic tone few signals keep on coming towards the heart few signals keep on coming toward the peripheral vessels so the tone is even present even normally even in this normal circumstances tone of sympathetic nerves is present so if inhibition if these nerves are blocked if the sympathetic system is blocked then even the small number of signals that is coming in the sympathetic tone they will also get blocked so the heart so the heart rate the heart rate will decrease it will decrease the pumping power or the effectiveness of the heart will also decrease 
and the mean systemic failing pressure because the 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 the, sim, the stimulation of the peripheral vessels will also decrease so the mean systemic failing pressure the pressure which is helping or moving the blood towards the heart it will also fall to a lower level for example in this case to 4 mm of mercury in the normal heart it was 7 mm of mercury so the heart, right atrial pressure has to increase to 7 to bring down the venous return to 0 with sympathetic stimulation the mean systemic filling pressure become 16 it became 16 so the right atrial pressure has to increase to 16 level to bring down the venous return to 0 now with the inhibition with the inhibition of sympathetic nervous system even the sympathetic tone has been blocked so the mean systemic filling pressure has fallen to a lower level and the heart rate has also decreased the pumping uh, power of the heart has also decreased and the mean systemic filling pressure has also decreased now the cardiac output and venous return curve the cardiac output and venous return curve the cardiac output and venous return curve meet at a new level and the the, the new cardiac output and the venous return are lower they become lower than this normal level so this was the normal point that this 10 level was due to the sympathetic stimulation and that lower level that new level is due to the inhibition due to the inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system and and the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure only has to increase to 4 mm of mercury to bring down the venous return to zero level if the sympathetic inhibition has occurred so to to see the effect of sympathetic stimulation and sympathetic inhibition of cardiac output we see that the cardiac output and venous return curve normally meet at 5 liters per minute and the right atrial pressure is 0 mm of mercury and mean systemic filling pressure is 7 mm of mercury when sympathetic stimulation occurs both the curves shifts upward it means the cardiac output and venous return both increases but the right atrial pressure remains the same the mean systemic filling pressure increases so to bring down the venous return to zero the heart, the right atrial pressure has to increase more if inhibition of the sympathetic nerves occur the tone the normal tone the normal tone of the sympathetic nerves is also lost so the heart rate decreases the power decreases the inhibition of sympathetic innervation of the peripheral vessels occur so the new cardiac output and venous return curve meet at a new level and the cardiac output and venous return both falls to a lower level and the mean systemic filling pressure also falls or decreases to a lower level so now the right atrial pressure only has to rise to or to increase to around 4 mm of mercury to bring down the venous return to zero so sympathetic stimulation simply elevates or increase the cardiac output and venous return even at normal right atrial pressure level and inhibition of the sympathetic system brings down or decreases it decreases the cardiac output and venous return even at the normal right atrial pressure level so that's all about the effect of sympathetic stimulation and inhibition on cardiac output